300,000 people in Iceland, right? But if it happened to Iceland, it can literally happen to uh, any country in the world. So the, the, the list is going to grow. The list is going to grow. And as, as, as I said, now the biggest question is going to what's going to happen in China. And as, as, as we know, you know, um, in China, the kind of like the, the way how like uh, the media is controlled, right? It's not, sometimes it's not really easy to figure out uh, what's, what's, what's happening in China to begin with, right? So the quality of information is not uh, that high. And if China goes down, you know, and uh, it, it will drag down uh, kind of like uh, many, many, many uh, more other countries. So th the list goes on. So this is, um, I mean, myth three, so it be myth four, that bailouts are good, right? So if you are kind of like more like a pro-market economy, you know, this uh, world bailout should kind of like scare you because when the government interferes, you know, of very often things get worse. And um, we have lots of historical examples uh, about that. And bailouts also create such called moral hazard problem. Then now, the next players, right? I mean, they can eliminate those investment banks, right? But they will be more in the future. But now, the major in investment banks will have the such called moral hazard problem when they think, you know, if something happens, next time the government is going to bail me out. So why don't I take more risk today, knowing based on the expectations that the government will, will bail, bail me out. But the scale of nationalization, it's really, it, it, it's really, really scary. You know, because now, I mean, I, 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 come, I, I come from Russia and I grew up in Soviet Union, right? But now some economists start looking for me, you know, even the government interference is larger in some of market economists right now than, it, than it's in, in Russia. So Russia seems to be more market economy now than what's happening, let's say, right now in the United, United Kingdom. And let me give you an example. A major bank, uh, Barclays, right? It's, 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 a, it's a British bank. So they also got into trouble because of this, um, of those, uh, the, the subprime uh, mortgage crisis. So Barclays needs uh, UK government money, right? But UK government money comes with a lot of conditions. One of the conditions, and now they have to have some people from the government sitting on the board of directors, right? And there was a period of time in UK and Canada, the United States, where actually they were trying hard to get rid of those government officials from the board of directors, right? For a uh, good reason. So now uh, the, 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 the bailout condition is that they have to uh, change their uh, deposit requirements. So it, the money comes with a lot of conditions. And actually, it turns out that uh, Barclays is rejected the bailout by uh, UK government and turned to the Russian government and being bailed out by the Russian state bank, right? Because when, if they get the Russian money, they don't have to have Russian government officials like on their board of directors. So, I mean, and, 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 and that's kind of a bizarre situation, right? This is something which we could really could not imagine several uh, years ago. Uh, now the trouble, uh, the trouble uh, spread from what's different about this crisis, unlike the previous crisis when it was the crisis was from emerging economies to developed economies, now it's the way around. It goes from developed economies to emerging economies, right? And most likely it's going to boomerang back uh, to the developed economies. So, but now, I mean, uh, lots of trouble. The scale of nationalization is really tremendous, especially uh, in emerging economies. So much wealth and undervalued assets get concentrated in the hands of the government, right? That they, they, they literally don't know what they're going to do with that, right? I mean, the, the world went through the several waves of privatizations, right? So, I mean, are they gonna like have a privatization programs again? It's, it's really hard to figure out how long, it will, how long it will take them, you know, and what the kind of uh, the value of those um, investments uh, is, is, is going to be. And just some, you know, some, some, some stories, some anecdotal evidence that like strange things happening. So I gave you this example that actually the first country which, um, which kind of collapsed you know, was Iceland, right? So Iceland, uh, you know, it's, again, it's a small nation uh, with uh, formerly three large banks. Now those banks are nationalized, which were uh, aggressively, I mean, aggressively taking money from uh, investors all over the world and investing them in those mortgage-based securities. So no wonder that Iceland was uh, really hardly hit. But the way they tried to bail Iceland out and how much time it takes, it's, it's, it's really, really, like, um, really strange. Because first Iceland, again, they turned to the Russian money to 
uh, be bailed out by uh, the Russian government, right? And I mean, to bail out Iceland, you don't need that much money. You need like two, three, maybe four billion, right, dollars. So, and Russia offered Iceland four, th four billion dollars, right? And uh, kind of like, you know, so Iceland agreed and uh, Russia agreed to give this loan, but the money has been like blocked in the middle and now there are talks that, in, that they, they, they'd rather have uh, IMF, uh, IMF funds to be spent to bail out Iceland. And you know, when you read this type of news that the Russian government is bailing out Iceland, you always need to think like, there is always a reason, right? You start thinking like, why? First of all, why, why is the Russian government bailing out anyone when they're themselves going through the crisis? And why are they bailing out Iceland? And then you can, you know, I mean, if you, if you read the press, there are always this kind of like, you know, like a mystery James Bond, Bond types of <laughs> story. So, well, apparently Iceland was uh, one of the largest offshore centers, right? Um, it's an offshore centers because they're not a part of the European Union and, you know, they're not a part of the European Union banking regulation, right? So there was lots of let me put it politically correct, like questionable mi Russian money flowing through the Iceland banks. And once those assets got frozen, right, for Russia spending $4 billion, you know, it was a good deal because they could at least get their, you know, 20 billion back, right? However, since the money was, you know, linked to uh, all kind of uh, uh, questionable activities, that's what I've heard. It got blocked by the international uh, international financial community it got blacked on higher levels through the IMF and, and, and the World Bank. So, so um, some Russian investors lot, lost a lot of money there. Myth number four is Canada immune. And that's probably, uh, well, we already know that Canada is not immune, right? And it's being, uh, it's being affected. Uh, we didn't have major, uh, uh, we, we haven't seen like major ban bankruptcies ye yet, but, but they might be. We don't know what's going to happen to the housing markets. We don't know what's going to happen to the banks, right? Some of them are in better shape, others are in the worse shape. Uh, well, we already know what happened to the stock market, right? I mean, if you just follow one day by day, like today's stock market went up, but I mean, it lost a lot of value, right? Lost of, uh, a lot of value. And uh, the biggest, always the biggest question is the pensions, right? I mean, I just know from personal, ex from personal experience, uh, people I know, they, now they have to work more, right? And the general trust in the financial uh, system kind of like eroded. Uh, Canadian net borrowing uh, uh, has reached 6.3 of disposable income compared to 7%. So it's a comparable number. That as the percent of assets in Canada is 20%. Yeah, like a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of countries. And I don't want to get in, like, this is like, uh, the, the worst one was Ukraine and Russia badly hit. So there was only one country that during this period of time, uh, from August to, till now, made some money. That was Tunisia, right? So you see this. Finish on a somewhat depressing note. I mean, we are not there yet. We are not at the bottom. So th things will... They have to kind of get worse before they uh, they get any better. Thank you. Thank you